Have you ever really found yourself wanting something, uh, wanting it so badly that you maybe even unwillingly hurt other people to be able to acquire it or to be able to get it or to be able to make it happen? Uh, that happens a lot in our culture today, doesn't it? Uh, kind of a lust or a longing for things and for stuff and putting a value on things over the value on people. Uh, where our cars or our, you know, our uh, rings and our clothes and our jewelry and, and our desires uh, are more important than the people that are around us. It kind of reminds me of the movie Finding Nemo when you see the seagull saying, mine, 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 and they're, they're longing after whatever object somebody else has or fish or food or whatever it might be. And that can happen to us if we're not careful. There's a really interesting passage of scripture in the Bible that talks about how our longing for things when it's unhealthy doesn't just hurt or damage us, but really it hurts the entire community of people around us. Whether it's believers or non-believers, doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna give you an example. It's found in Joshua chapter seven. Israel has just basically had one of the greatest victories ever. Joshua has led the Israelites into the promised land. Things have gone incredibly well. They've just defeated Jericho after an incredibly weird tactic of walking around the walls seven days in a row and seven times on the seventh day of blowing trumpets and the walls come down. It's been this great victory. But in that process, God asked them to not longer covet or take anything that was not theirs from Jericho. It was all to be to the Lord. So everything they got as far as treasure goes was to go to the Lord. It was to all go to honor Him and to build this temple and to bring glory to Him. And everything else was to be destroyed with fire so they wouldn't be tempted to worship other gods or serve other, uh, other created things. And yet we find in this passage that in Joshua 7 that one man named Achan decided that that wasn't enough. That he had things that he saw, that he coveted, that he longed for when they went into Jericho. And he took those things, the Bible says, and he buried those things and he hid them from everyone else in Israel. And then when they went to go fight their next battle against the town of Ai, which wasn't that impressive compared to Jericho, they only sent a few thousand men, I think it was about 3,000 men up to defeat Ai. They got their tails handed to them. They got whooped up, beat up. Their army was messed up. And they come back and Joshua falls on his face before God and goes, what has happened? Who has done the wicked thing? There must be sin in the camp because there's no way we would ever lost this battle if God was on our side. So they go back and they begin to narrow down who was that sinned and who was that that took advantage of God, who was it that, that disobeyed God. And it goes tribe after tribe after tribe till they narrow it down to this guy and it's Achan. And Achan has decided to take some of the goods of Jericho. And as a result, his entire town, his entire nation of Israel was defeated in battle. Men lost their lives, bad things took place because one man's disobedience affected the entire nation. See, in Hebraic culture, they clearly understood that one always affected the whole. It wasn't just my actions. It wasn't just God's purpose for me. It was whatever I do affects the whole community of people that I'm around and a part of. And my challenge to you is that when we long or we covet or we desire things that are not ours, that God has said, don't t do this, don't touch this, don't go after this, don't pursue this relationship, don't go after this thing, it will hurt you, it will damage you. Whenever we put things ahead of people, we don't just damage ourselves, we damage the entire community that God's placed us in. So I wanna encourage you, think about your actions this week, how everything you do affects the community of people that you're around. And that if you're longing for things that aren't what God has for you, if you're pursuing things that aren't what God wants, if you're putting them before people, you're not just hurting yourself, you're hurting the entire community of believers that God's placed you around. Every action we make has a consequence. And a lot of times it's a lot greater than we think. So I want to encourage you, really evaluate how your actions affect the people around you. So throughout this week, throughout this month, contemplate that. And let's see what God will do as we choose to do what God desires to bless the people around us, to put people before things, and obedience to God at the highest. I love you and believe in you. Have a great week and God bless.
we will once again be returning to the luxurious Hotel Paradox located right at the heart of downtown Santa Cruz. If you're the ages of 18 to 35, married or single, we would love to have you at this retreat. Early registration cost is $135 with monthly payment plans available. Don't wait. Monthly payment plans are based strictly upon your registration date with all final payments due on Sunday, October 5th. For more information and to receive the early registration discount, go online to ctcresistance.org forward slash fall retreat 2014 or stop by the counter in the lobby today. We can't wait to see you in Santa Cruz.